Hello students. In today's video, we are going to study in brief a short summary on pharmacology of anti-tubercular drugs. Now let's quickly understand basics of tuberculosis before studying the pharmacology. Now tuberculosis is also known as TB. Now TB is a chronic granulomatous disease. It is caused by infection due to a bacteria termed as Mycobacterium tuberculosis. Now this bacteria is also known as tubercle bacilli. Now look at this figure. Now lesion that is produced by this bacteria is known as granuloma. And thus tuberculosis is known as granulomatous disease. Now this disease primarily affects lungs and therefore uh, tuberculosis is known as pulmonary tuberculosis. But when it affects organs other than lungs, like for example joints, bones, central nervous system, genitourinary tract, then it is termed as extrapulmonary tuberculosis. Now if this bacteria infects blood, then the infection spreads throughout the body, it becomes life-threatening and then the tuberculosis is termed as miliary tuberculosis. Now look at this figure. It shows structure of mycobacterium tuberculosis. Now mycobacterium tuberculosis is a rod shaped bacteria and it possesses a highly complex cell wall structure. Now as you can see here in this diagram, cell wall is made up of five main tissue layers. Innermost is the cell membrane. Cell membrane is covered by peptidoglycan layer. Peptidoglycan layer is in turn covered by rabinogalactan layer. Above that is the layer of mycolic acid and the outermost capsule. So this cell wall structure of mycobacterium tuberculosis is highly complex. Uh, now this mycolic acid layer is the toughest of all the layers. Most of the antibiotics cannot pass through this layer. Thus TB requires long term treatment and it is treated by multi-drug therapy. Now antitubercular drugs are classified as first line drugs and second line drugs. Now first line drugs are mainly commonly used for the treatment of TB. These are highly efficacious with low toxicity. Now second line drugs are used as reserve drugs as their efficacy is less and toxicity is more. These are used for the treatment of multi drug resistant TB. Now first line drugs are rifampicin also called as rifampin, isoniazid, pyrazinamide, ethambutol and streptomycin. Now you can remember these drugs by the mnemonics RIPES. R -I -P -E -S. Then second line drugs are athionamide, prothionamide, cycloserine, terizidone, fluorocun uh, then paramino salicylic acid, then fluoroquinolones like uh, ofloxacin, levofloxacin, moxifloxacin, ciprofloxacin. Now moxifloxacin is the most effective fluoroquinolone against mycobacterium tuberculosis. Now injectable drugs include aminoglycoside antibiotics namely kenamycin, amikacin. Now as first line drugs are mainly used for the treatment of tuberculosis, let's uh, discuss pharmacology of these drugs. Uh, now look at this chart. It summarizes pharmacology of uh, first line antitubercular drugs. Now, uh, first line antitubercular drugs as we have already uh, studied are isoniazid, rifampicin, pyrazinamide, ethambutol and streptomycin. Now all these drugs are bactericidal or these are tuberculocidal. They kill mycobacterium tuberculosis except ethambutol. Ethambutol is bacteriostatic. It inhibits growth of mycobacterium tuberculosis. Now pyrazinamide is weakly bactericidal in comparison to isoniazid and rifampicin. Now both these drugs are strongly bactericidal. Isoniazid and rifampicin are in fact excellent anti-tubercular drugs. Now next important parameter 
to be studied is the penetration of drug, how far the drug can reach and produce its effect. Here we must know that uh, in the alveoli of lungs, bacilli is engulfed by macrophages as macrophages are the first line of defense. So bacteria can be present intracellularly inside the cells or it can be present extracellularly that is outside the cell. So isoniazid, rifampicin and ethambutol act on intracellular as well as extracellular mycobacterium tuberculosis while pyrazinamide acts only intracellularly while streptomycin acts only extracellularly. Now next uh, let's see to the mechanism of action of these drugs. Now isoniazid and pyrazinamide inhibit synthesis of mycolic acid while Ethambutol inhibits synthesis of arabinogalactan. So these three drugs, namely isoniazid, pyrazinamide, and ethambutol, they prevent cell wall synthesis of mycobacterium tuberculosis. On the other hand, rifampicin. Rifampicin inhibits bacterial DNA dependent RNA polymerase enzyme thereby prevents the synthesis of bacterial RNA which further causes inhibition of synthesis of bacterial proteins and this results in bacterial death. Streptomycin also inhibits synthesis of bacterial proteins. Now after mechanism of action adverse effects of these drugs. Now isoniazid, rifampicin and pyrazinamide these are hepatotoxic. Now pyrazinamide and ethambutol can produce hyperuricemia and this can cause increased concentration of uric acid in the blood. Now this hyperuricemia can cause gout. Now besides hepatotoxicity Another very important adverse effect of isoniazid is peripheral neuritis that is the inflammation of the peripheral nerves. Now inflammation of peripheral nerves can cause numbness that is loss of sensation, uh, mental disturbances. So supplementation of uh, vitamin B6 is very essential along with isoniazid. Now vitamin B6 prevents neurotoxicity of isoniazid. Now coming to uh, rifampicin, rifampicin also is hepatotoxic. Now rifampicin can also cause orange red coloration of all body secretions like for example urine, saliva, tears etc. Now this adverse effect is harmless but patients should be kept informed otherwise it can cause fear and anxiety in the patient. Then uh, ethambutol can cause optic neuritis that is inflammation of the optic nerve of eye. Now uh, this uh, optic neuritis can cause loss of uh, visual sharpness, it can cause uh, color vision and other eye problems. Then uh, streptomycin can cause autotoxicity that is toxicity of ears and uh, nephrotoxicity that is toxicity of kidneys. So these are the very important uh, pharmacological features of uh, first line drugs used uh, commonly for the treatment of tuberculosis. Uh, now let's uh, quickly understand treatment of active and uh, latent tuberculosis. Now active tuberculosis is symptomatic and communicable that means it is transmittable. Now active tuberculosis includes all new cases where sputum smear is found to be positive. Then patients with severe pulmonary TB, patients with severe form of extra pulmonary TB. Now treatment is done in two phases. Initial intensive phase with four drugs, uh, four drugs namely rifampicin, isoniazid, pyrazinamide and ethambutol uh, with uh, vitamin B6 as a supplement to prevent neurotoxicity of isoniazid. Uh, 
Now this initial treatment uh, is given for the first two months. Now this treatment rapidly kills TB bacilli and provide symptomatic relief. Now this is followed by the continuation phase with two drugs. Rifampicin and isoniazid along with the vitamin B6 is given for the next four months for killing remaining bacteria and for complete cure of the disease. So this is the treatment of active tuberculosis. Then in latent tuberculosis as we know TB bacilli remains dormant. So uh, it's uh, asymptomatic and it is non-communicable. It cannot be transmitted. Now latent uh, TB is treated by uh, one drug either isoniazid uh, along with vitamin B6 for 6 to 9 months or with rifampicin for 4 months. So this is the treatment of latent tuberculosis. So this is in short summary covering pharmacology of uh, anti-tubercular drugs. Now the complete pharmacology of all first line and second line drugs can be studied from a detailed video whose link is given below in the description box. Now information provided in this video is only for informative academic purpose. For use of anti-tubercular drugs or for the treatment of tuberculosis, consult your physician. If you find the video useful, kindly like, subscribe and share this video. Thanks for watching this video.